recent thing, event that just happened, AT&T, a couple days ago. I don't know if it happened to your Yeah, I think, I think that was a Chinese cyber attack. You think so? Yeah. Why do you say that? Um, I, would, I would predict that was a warning, uh, a, a trial run before they, they go do more aggressive things on Taiwan in April or May. So is that a way of I, I, saying? I, I, would, I would expect um, provocation by their maritime militia or some of the islands. So Because there's Taiwan Island, Formosa, mm-hmm. and there's smaller ones like Quimoy and Matsu, which are right up against the Chinese, actually the Chinese mainland. I can see some incidents there where they seize those or stage an incident or an accident, and they end up putting hundreds of Chinese maritime militia, which are just PLA troops, called maritime militia. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, and they'll see what the West does. Is Biden going to roll an aircraft carrier if that happens? And so they will test and see if there's consequences. Test and see if there's consequences. They now do hundreds of Chinese Air Force aircraft that overfly Taiwanese airspace all the time without consequence. They shoot missiles over Taiwan, over Japanese territory even, without consequence. If you allow them... China is an ancient society, and they, they will salami slice. They will keep pushing, right? You know how you, cut a, you can cut it really thin, mm-hmm. and, and they might take uh, three little slices, but they've moved. They've moved the ball in their direction, where they want to be. And Trump was the first president that came along that said, hey, they're, they're like a neighbor that moves the yard fence into your yard, Six inches a year. And Trump was the first one that said, hey, get the hell back on your side of the line. I can tell you I spent enough time in China during the Trump administration. They were spooked by him. They were, they were the trade policies and uh, the controls on certain technologies not going to China really spooked them. What's your level of speculation of, on this being China? If you were to say, you know, over under, I'd say 70% is China, 50% is China. What would you say on the AT&T incident? 70%. Okay. So let's just say that's 70% China. Are they doing it and telling U.S. that we did it? Like, are yep. they doing... Okay. So they're doing it and they're did saying... Break contact on Taiwan and or, or more to follow. Got it. To say we are capable of doing way more than this if you screw with this. Okay. So let me ask... Let me go a little bit deeper with this because when with that... A lot, and lots of asymmetric capability inside the United States already. What does it look like? Give us a... Paint a picture of how ugly this could be. Well, what China is capable of. Look, China, from a CI, counterintelligence perspective, yeah. they've had the Confucius Institutes at American universities for decades, which are Chinese government-funded interest and communication centers on, on campuses. They have the Thousand Talents program, where they would task smart Chinese right. to go... Thousand Talent program. Thousand Talent program, uh, where they would task smart Chinese to go study in a specific university to gather intel on a specific thing. So they're tasked to go burrow in, learn, do, follow, take that tech back to China. Okay, They have the United Front Works Department all through the United States. So you have a, a lot of Chinese diaspora that are here that, that the Ministry of State Security still has their hooks in. Um, uh, and because there's family members back in China that they, they can hold in danger to make that person in America do what they want. Um, if, the, if the FBI was serious about CI, the, the Communist Party members have to check in and go for training at least every six months. So there's a, uh, it's called the general, I think it's called the general manage, management department. It's like the HR department of the Chinese Communist Party, and they oversee the training you have to do every year. It's almost like reserve duty where they have to come in and get their party indoctrination. If they were smart, surveil every consulate, every known Chinese facility, and see who's going in and out of there. Those are the CCP members that are here in the United States working, living, studying, uh, and some of, them, some of them even working for the U.S. government. So, yeah, they have a massive... Uh, installed base of influence and covert action already, and that's more the, mostly on the collection side. And because of the the massive illegal flow of migration, there's a lot of Chinese males, military age males. They're not all Chinese soldiers. They're not all Chinese spies. There's a lot of men. There's like 40 million males 
of marriage age in China with no prospects of marrying a female because of sex selection abortion. When they had one child policy, the parents would abort a, a female baby and have a male. So they have so these these dudes are in China with a economy not doing great with no prospects of a female. They say, "Hell, I'm I'm going to America." Now, if only 2% of those millions are bad, still really bad. So again, that's a that is a serious CI problem that needs to be mopped up. On the cyber side, I mean AT and T phone goes out, right? Uh, so can they not, knocked out nine one one service? That's right. So can they? It, it, what does their cyber attack capabilities look like? How like if you were to paint a picture, what could it look uh, like? Quite significant. And and if they have if there's Huawei switches and any of that Chinese telecom infrastructure in the United States, which is what. Uh, Trump was right to ban mm-hmm. and to push other allies to ban. When the daughter was trying to come in from Canada and she was doing business with Iran and exactly. Huawei no longer could do business here. Yep. I remember that. Yep. Um, but before that, there was a lot of Huawei switches installed. Mm-hmm. And so who knows what uh, what backdoors that uh, you know, still have. Huawei was started by a ex-PLA colonel uh, from the intelligence business. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's no, no, no shocker there. So, but, but, but paint a picture, meaning, for example, do they have the capability of the week of the election to have 300,000 phones, you know, in, in make life challenging in certain zip codes, certain areas that maybe are going to be politically voting on one side or the other to keep the, the left or Biden in? Is, are they capable of being able to do something like that? They understand asymmetric warfare very, very well. So yeah, think of the permutations of, of nonsense that they can pull. They'll probably do it. Okay. So let's just say they do do it. You saw Look, What they are doing now yeah. is sponsoring the fentanyl epidemic. China. Absolutely. Unequivocally fact. The precursor drugs produced actually around Wuhan, mm-hmm. oddly enough, the same mm-hmm. place that uh, COVID leaked from. And... Uh, the stuff is shipped to Venezuela, Venezuela to Mexico, formulated into fentanyl. And think about it. All these fentanyl deaths, like 109,000 Americans killed by fentanyl. And it's, you know, a normal drug dealer doesn't want to make a drug that kills his customers. Dead customers don't pay. They don't buy, right? That is absolutely pushed to a fatal level as a, as a true disruptive destruction to American society. And they, sh- and they need to feel consequences for that. The, da- the son of YouTube's former CEO, Susan, just died from uh, fentanyl. C- yeah. YouTube's CEO, former, yeah. she resigned a couple, week- couple years ago. Her son just passed away. Tragic death from fentanyl. Yes. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.